ओम ज्ञान ज्ञानाजन शलाकया चक्षुर मिलित तस्म श्री गुरव नम नमो विष्णुपदा कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते राधनाथ स्वामी नीति नामिने नमो विष्णुपदा कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते जय प्रताक स्वामी नीति नामिने नमाचार्य पदा निताय कृपा प्रदायिने गौरकथा धामदाय नगर ग्रहतारिणे नम ओं विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नीति नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वती देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्यादिशतारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गाधर श्रीवासवि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे So we'll continue on with text four of Sri Jagannath Ashtakam. <clears throat> Kripa Paravara Sajala Jala Jashwe Niru Chiro Rama Vani Rama Sura Ramala Pankhe Ruha Mukha Sura Indra Ira Radhya श्रुति गण शिख गीत चरित जगन्नाथ स्वामी नयन पथ गावतो लॉर्ड जगन्नाथ इज एन ओशन ऑफ मर्सी एंड एज ब्यूटिफुल एज अ रो ऑफ ब्लैकिश रेन क्लाउड्स He is the storehouse of bliss for Lakshmi and Saraswati and his face resembles a spotless full-blown lotus the best of demigods and sages worship him and the Upanishads sing his glories may that jagannath swami be the object of my vision mukam karoti vachanam pangurlangayate giram यत्कृपातमहम वंदे श्री गुरु दिनतारिणम परमानंद माधव श्री चैतन्य ईश्वर हरिओं सो कंटिन्यूइंग ऑन विथ दिस वेरी ब्यूटिफुल श्री जगन्नाथ अष्टकम दिस पर्टिक्युलर वर्स टेक्स्ट फोर इज सेइंग दैट लॉर्ड जगन्नाथ ही इज एन ओशन ऑफ मर्सी दैट इज यू नो जस्ट लाइक द ओशन वी कैन नेवर सी where the ocean ends it looks as if it is unlimited you know a river has a beginning it has an end it has a source a river or a um, you know small pond we can see a small pond or you can see any small reservoirs of water we can see that it is contained within a particular uh, boundary even the you know if you consider mother ganges mother ganges she also has you know her origin in the himalayas and then she comes down and then she keeps flowing down through many many states and then she finally culminates into the uh, bay of bengal so like this different reservoirs of water we can see a source we can see where they culminate we can see the beginning and the ending or you know the circumference of the reservoirs of water but ocean is such a reservoir of water that we cannot see where it ends there is no end to an ocean it is unlimited we cannot say okay this is the end point of the ocean 
it just cannot be said so that is why you know the lord you know krishna or lord jagannath or even our spiritual masters you know shri prabhupad they are all always referred to as kripa sindhu they are an ocean of mercy ocean of mercy means they are the reservoirs of such mercy which has no end there is no limit to that mercy for anyone whether they are deserving whether most of the cases it's not deserving but whether they deserve or whether they don't deserve that mercy never discriminates and that is why when we see any letters that shri prabhupad would write shri prabhupad would always write please accept my blessings what does that mean one time a disciple actually asked this question to shri prabhupad that shri prabhupad why do you write please accept my blessings your blessings are always there so shri prabhupad said that yes the sunlight is also always there but how much are we going into the sun and basking ourselves in the sunlight taking in the sunlight it is up to us how much we are whether we choose to close all our doors all our windows and not let even a ray of sun come inside and touch us so the sunlight is always there but it is up to us how much we want sunlight to be accessed in our life similarly the blessings of the acharyas they are always there but it is up to us how much we are really grabbing that blessings how much we are really reaching out for that blessings and that is the reason why the acharyas out of their unlimited compassion they say that please accept my blessings please accept it so this is something very very significant for us to understand that jagannath is is indeed you know he is an ocean of mercy kripa paravara sajala jalad shreni ruchiro rama vani rama surat amala panke ruha mukha that the glory is of lord jagannath the bliss of seva to lord jagannath is experienced by lakshmi devi and saraswati devi and lord jagannath says it resembles a spotless full blown lotus this is the only thing that is there in lord jagannath's eye face is his lotus two lotus blooming eyes and his beautiful broad smile that is all is there in jagannath's face so spotless there's no unnecessary this that nothing the only thing that when we look at lord jagannath's face is just his lotus eyes and his most beautiful enchanting smile that is why lord jagannath is referred to as the spotless full blown lotus completely bloomed out lotus and the best of the devatas and the sages they come and worship lord jagannath and all of the upanishads sing his glories so may that lord jagannath be the object of my vision so here in this verse i was thinking that since Lakshmi Devi is brought up in this particular verse. I thought to share a pastime, a very beautiful, very sweet pastime of Lakshmi Devi with Lord Jagannath. There are many pastimes of Lakshmi Devi with Lord Jagannath, but today I will share one of them. One of them which is very, very close to my heart. So Lakshmi Devi, you know, it is said. like when we were discussing the miracles of jagannath puri one of the miracles is that in the kitchen of lord jagannath where maha rajbhog is cooked for lord jagannath over there there are seven pots which are kept on top of each other and you know all these pandas what they do is that they mix everything together and they just put it in the pot like if they taking sabji then they cut up the vegetables they will mix everything together they will add everything all spices all salt everything they will add and they will just put it in the pot 
then they will put everything else they'll put them stack them up one on top of the other they will place it on the fire and actually it is said that they all leave the kitchen because there's a big deity a golden deity of mahalakshmi devi inside that kitchen who is holding a like a spatula she's holding a spatula and you know that is the form of lakshmi devi who is considered to be cooking the rajbhog for lord jagannath and uh, so then after doing all of this the pandas they all leave and after some time when they come back everything is cooked and it defies material laws because the the pot that is there on the top that gets cooked first and the pot that is there nearest to the fire that gets done in the end so there's no question of any kind of burning or anything that happens so lakshmi devi personally takes care of all the cooking even till today for lord jagannath so this is a past time between lakshmi devi and lord jagannath lakshmi devi as we all know that jagannath he is sitting um and then toward jagannath um left is um on jagannath's left is shubhadra devi and um sorry um jagannath is um jagannath baladev shubhadra jagannath is sitting and then on the uh, on <clears throat> jagannath is having shubhadra devi next to him and um balabhadra is sitting so shubhadra is basically sitting in the center and lord jagannath he is having shubhadra devi on his right on the right of jagannath is shubhadra devi and there is a small deity a very small golden color deity gold deity in gold who is sitting on the left of lord jagannath and that is the deity of lakshmi devi very small deity is sitting on the left of lord jagannath just like how we have radha and krishna so next to radharani's position is always towards the left of krishna so similarly even lakshmi devi is actually sitting on the left of lord jagannath you know in a very very small golden color form so she is worshiped also along with lord jagannath and on the same asana and of course we have sudarshan who is also sitting next to lord jagannath so lakshmi devi one day she told um she told her husband lord jagannath that my dear lord jagannath you know i have some very very sweet and ardent devotees of mine and these devotees of mine they are extremely dear to me and these devotees because they are in your land they know that they love you they worship you but somehow they are very very special and very dear to me they are not very rich because they worship me because i am your wife they don't worship me separate from you and these are the shabaras you know the very um they are called the you know not the high class brahmanas you know they are very they have a separate you know like a village like a tribe in itself that uh, and that entire tribe is an ardent follower of lakshmi devi and because you know generally we all have the notion that all of the followers of lakshmi devi are or the worshipers of lakshmi devi are very rich but these particular group of devotees lakshmi devi explained that because they are actually followers of lord jagannath and they worship lakshmi devi because she is the consort of lord jagannath so they are very devoted to her and they don't worship her for lakshmi or anything like that but uh, for getting money or for getting any riches but they just adore her because of her devotion to lord jagannath so lakshmi devi she has a very special place in her heart for these shabaras and she told lord jagannath that my dear lord jagannath my dear husband i was just thinking that see when you go out to rakhyatra you don't take me with you 
You go out with your brother and your sister. You don't take me with you. For seven days I am here alone in this temple. So I am requesting you that can I take a break also? You know, I also feel like going and, you know, just going and spending some time with my devotees. So can I can I just go? So then Jagannath said, yes, yes, of course. You should also go. There is no problem with that at all. You should definitely go. No problem. So then Lakshmi Devi said that, but, you know, who is going to cook for you? Um, you know, it is. Uh, you know, I will go now, I'll come back by evening, I will make the evening offering. Jagannath said, no worries, you don't worry, you go. Uh, I'll take care of it, we'll get someone else to cook, you know, don't worry, you go. So, Lakshmi Devi was very happy, so she went, and she went to her devotee uh, group, you know, this little village where, you know, her devotees used to stay. And she went there and she spent some time with them. And then it was time for... Hare Krishna. So it was time for Jagannath's lunchtime. It was afternoon. So Jagannath, Baladev and Shubhadra Devi, they were hungry. And no offering was coming. So they were getting worried, and Balabhadra especially, he is someone who cannot control his hunger. You know, he gets very angry if prasadam, if bhoga is not there on time. Balabhadra gets very, very upset. So Balabhadra said, hey, Jagannath, where is your wife? Why is she not bringing, you know, Rajbhog for us? We are waiting. I am hungry. So then... Jagannath said, oh, oh, I forgot to tell Balabhadra. And then he said, you know, well, today, you know, we'll just eat some fruits. And Lakshmi Devi will come back in the evening, then she'll cook. But now you can just eat some fruits and, you know, let us, uh, you know, control our hunger with just some having some fruits. So then Balabhadra got really angry with Jagannath and said, who told you to send Lakshmi Devi away? Where did she go? And then Jagannath explained that Lakshmi Devi took my permission and I sent her to go and see her devotees. But Balabhadra got very, very angry. Very, very angry. And then when Lakshmi Devi came back in the evening, she was so happy, you know, poor Lakshmi Devi. She just went out. She had a nice time. And then she was returning back. When she came back, Balabhadra was standing at the gate. And Balabhadra said, to Lak and Lakshmi Devi, you know, um, she's very, very respectful towards Balabhadra. So yeah, as soon as she saw Balabhadra there, she immediately covered her head. She offered her obeisances. And then Balabhadra was so angry at Lakshmi Devi and said, you went to go and sit with your devotees and you didn't even care that we are hungry over here. So you go and stay with your devotees only. Don't have to come back here. You go from here. So Balabhadra in his anger, he said like this, and Lakshmi Devi was very deeply offended because even Jagannath was there, but Jagannath didn't defend his wife. So Lakshmi Devi got very, very upset. And Jagannath, you know, because in the anger of Baladev, even Jagannath cannot stand that, you know. So he was scared. So Bichara Jagannath didn't say anything. And Balabhadra was so angry. Lakshmi Devi was so super hurt that, you know, where is my fault in it? I told my husband and my husband did not is not supporting me now. So in her hurt condition, she said, okay, I'm going away from the temple. So when Lakshmi Devi left in such hurtful way from the temple, all the Shri, you know, all the... Um, Lakshmi Devi is the carer of, carrier of opulence. So all the opulence also left along with Lakshmi Devi. So Lakshmi Devi took, you know, because she was so hurt, she was crying, and in that condition she left. So then she just went, and she just went away. And Balabhadra said, you know, and then Shubhadra came, and Shubhadra said, why did you send her away? She, she was coming to cook for us. Now I am also hungry. Who is going to cook for us? And then Baladev said, don't worry, Shubhadra, you are hungry, you know. I will cook for you. Come, Jagannath, let's go to the kitchen and we will cook. 
So then Jagannath and Baladev went inside the kitchen. They just tied, you know, turbans, you know, just like how the, you know, those who are head chefs, like nowadays we have head chef, they have the chef cap. So in, in India, the head chefs, they wear nice turban, you know, they just tie up their hair like that. So Balabhadra and Jagannath, you know, Baladev actually put a nice tight turban on his head and he put made Jagannath also wear same, you know, tight cloth turban and they both entered into the kitchen of Lakshmi Devi. And then both of them entered, but, there's, you know, they didn't know. They had never entered the kitchen before. So then they're trying to, Jagannath said, Baladev ordered to Jagannath, you cut up all the vegetables, let's do this. I will take care of this. We will have to feed ourselves. We are so hungry. So let's do this. So then, uh, while Jagannath was cutting up the vegetables, Baladev, what he did was, okay, I have to light fire to cook. I have to light the fire. So he, you know, he he said, oh, Magnaya Swaha, but Agnidev was not coming because opulence had left. Shri had left from the temple. So even Agnidev was not coming. So it is said that those days they would actually not extinguish the fire. You know, the way they would light the fire is by blowing, you know, through almost like a uh, like a pipe, you know, like a long kind of a straw made of wood. They would blow into the um, into the fireplace and then that all the ashes would clear out and then with the wind the fire would light up so baladev he took that pipe and he started blowing into the ashes and he was blowing 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 but the you know agni dev had disappeared from there so all the ash came and blew back on Baladev's white face and Baladev started to cough and he was, you know, feeling so miserable and Jagannath could not control his laughter seeing the beautiful white face of Balabhadra had become, you know, like puffs of, you know, ashes on his beautiful lotus-like face. So then Jagannath said, okay, now let me try. Jagannath came, he also tried to blow and again, you know, on Jagannath's black face, you know, there were ashes, you know, gray spoofs of ashes coming on his face. So like this, both the brothers were totally frustrated that what are we going to do? Our sister is hungry. So then, you know, they said, okay, cooking is out of the, our list. We can't manage the cooking. Let us try and go into the uh, village and let us try to go into the city of Puri and let us go and beg. So Jagannath and Baladev, they assumed the form of Brahmanas and they told, you know, Shubhadra Devi that you stay in the in the in in here in the temple. We'll go and get something to eat for you. So both the brothers left the temple, and then they are, you know, going and begging for arms, but nobody is giving any kind of arms to them. Nobody is giving any arms to them. They are going from door to door. Everyone is coming up with one excuse or the other. That, oh, there is a death in the family. We can't give you anything. And the one time a child opened the door and said, oh, my parents are not there. I don't know what to give you. One door he, they went to, oh, we have not cooked anything the whole day today. We don't have anything at home. So Jagannath and Balabhadra were, and Baladev especially, was super duper hungry and he didn't know what to do. So it was very late in the night by this time. And then they came upon this little village, which was the Shavara village. Jagannath, you know, kind of took Baladeva over there and, you know, by walking, walking. He didn't say anything, but he just, you know, they just came to that village. And then Balabhadra said, look, it is so late in the night, but people are awake over there. Let us go into this village and let us try to beg for some arms. So Jagannath said, yes, yes, Balabhadra, let's go, let's go. So both the brothers, they came and they knocked on the first house. And then the Shabara, he came out and he came out and he said, oh, Brahmanas in our village, please come in, Brahman Devta, please come in. And then the Shabara welcomed the two Brahmanas, Jagannath and Balabhadra, and they washed, his, washed their lotus feet. And then they said, well, we are here for some bhiksha. Can you please give us something to eat? And we want to take something. Our sister is very hungry. So we have to take something with us also. So then the Shabara said, yes, yes, of course. Please come. 
please come and sit. Please come and sit. And then they made very nice arrangements for Jagannath and Baladev. And then, uh, you know, this Jagannath and Baladev sat down on a banana leaf plate. The Shabana made arrangement. And then one after the other, opulent after opulent items were coming. And they were both eating to their heart's content. And they were looking at each other that how such opulent prashadam is coming in front of them. Such opulent bhoga is coming in front of them and they are eating. They are just, every morsel is tasting like nectar. And then finally, they ate very sumptuously everything, you know, starting from bitter, then to, you know, salty items, then sour items, rice, different kinds of rice items, different kinds of sabjis, just the way, you know, Jagannath and Balabhadra are used to eating. They were eating in that same way. And they were so surprised how this Shabara is having such opulent bhoga in his house. And they were, you know, but they were so hungry, they couldn't think. So they were going on eating, eat, eating, eating, eating. They felt very, very satisfied. And in the end, when it came time for Madhuram Samarpaya, it means you, we always end the meal with some madhu, means with some nectar, which is sweet. The sweet is had in the end of the meal. So when the dessert came in front of Balabhadra, Balabhadra saw that dessert and he said to that Shabara, Go and call Lakshmi Devi. Because that sweet in the entire creation can be made only by Lakshmi Devi. And Balabhadra has a very sweet tooth. So Baladev is his favorites are sweets. So Lakshmi Devi knew exactly what Baladev likes and she made this very, very um, opulent dish which is very, very dear to Lord Jagannath and Baladev, it is called Chana Puda. Chana Puda, Chana means like paneer, and paneer which is, you know, sweetened with sugar and with little bit of ghee, and then it is Puda means burnt in Bengali. Chana Puda means paneer that has been burnt. Basically, it is like paneer cake, you know, so um, the top is nicely golden brown, and, you know, the bottom is, so it comes out like pieces and it is dipped in sugar syrup and with cardamom. It's, it's super duper tasty. So this is one of the most famous sweets of Jagannath Puri. It's called Chana Pura. So as soon as Balabhadra saw this, he told the Shabara, call Lakshmi Devi. He could understand that it is Lakshmi Devi who is sitting in that kitchen and cooking for both of them. So then Lakshmi Devi came out very, very, uh, you know, modestly she came out. And Balabhadra, you know, being the brother-in-law for Lakshmi Devi, he said, my dear mother Lakshmi Devi, I beg for your forgiveness to be so angry on you. But you know I cannot control my hunger and you are the only one who can actually satisfy our hunger. So mother, please never ever leave us because if you leave, all the Shri also leaves with you. So please come back with us. So Jagannath also, you know, pacified uh, Lakshmi Devi. He also said, you know, beg forgiveness from his wife. And then Lakshmi Devi very happily, you know, she left along with Jagannath and Balabhadra and they brought back a lot of sumptuous bhoga for their dear darling sister, Shubhadra Devi. And when they brought back and then after that, you know, Jagannath and Balabhadra were very careful. They would say that Lakshmi Devi, even if you have to go to meet with your devotees, you make sure you cook for us and then you go. So Lakshmi Devi would always, you know, till today she does that seva of cooking for Jagannath, Balabhadra and Shubhadra. Glorious, glorious service to, uh, you know, their lordship. So this is how Jagannath, Baladev and Shubhadra, they are performing their eternal pastimes in uh, Jagannath Puri. And, um, you know, in the, when I s talked about Madhuram Samarpayet, I remembered another very sweet pastime in Rajapur Jagannath in Mayapur. What happened is one time when the worship of Jagannath Baldev Shubhadra came to the hands of ISKCON, and at that time, after a couple of years, 
there was a Dwarkadish Shila, you know, Dwarkadish Shaligram, who was brought into the same altar as Jagannath Baladev Shubhadra, and he started getting worshipping, uh, worshipped on the same altar. So Dwarkadish Shila was there, um, and someone had brought, and so, you know, he started staying on the altar with Jagannath Baladev and getting worship in Rajapur. So after a couple of days, one day in the dream of the Pujari, Balabhadra comes and says, Hey, my dear Pujari, why are you not giving sweets to us? Where is our sweet? You know I love sweets. And why for the past two days you are not giving sweets to us? So the Pujari was, you know, he immediately woke up and he was thinking, oh, did I make a mistake? Did I really make a mistake of, you know, not offering sweets to Jagannath Baldev Shubhadra? How can I do this? So that particular day when he was making the Rajbhog offering, the Pujari was very cautious. And he made sure that, you know, all, you know, sweets are there nicely uh, put in the plate. And he offered again that night. Balabhadra came and said, My dear Pujari, again you forgot the sweets. And this Pujari said, No, no, Baladev, I remember. I was very, very careful that I made sure that I put the sweets in your plate. And, you know, Balabhadra said, No, you didn't. So then again the next day, the Pujari was very, very cautious. And he again put, you know, sweets. He made sure that, you know, attentively he put the sweets on their plate and he did the offering. And then the third night again, Balabhadra came. And when Balabhadra was shouting at the Pujari at that time, Jagannath came. And Jagannath came and said, My dear Pujari, it's not your fault. Balabhadra, it is not the fault of the Pujari. And then Balabhadra said, What do you mean it's not the fault of the Pujari? It is his fault. He forgot to put sweets on our plate. And then Jagannath said that it is actually not the Pujari's fault. It is the fault of that Dwarkadish Shila. This Dwarkadish, since the time that he has come, he is Gujarati. And from Gujarat, you know, they start eating from sweets first. So when, since the time that he has come, all the sweets are gone because, and we are from Bengal. And because Bengalis, we eat sweets in the end. So by the time you finish all the salty and everything and come to the sweets, the sweets are gone. They are already eaten by Dwarkadish. So that's why you are not getting. This Dwarkadish is eating and Gujarati because they start from sweets. So this Dwarkadish is eating up all our sweets. So then, you know, the Pujari was stunned, you know, hearing all of this in the dream. And then Balabhadra said, okay, Pujari, from today what you will do is you give a separate plate to that Dwarkadish, let him eat however he wants, but a separate plate for us, so that we don't miss our sweets. So make a separate plate for Dwarkadish. So from that day onwards, till today, in Rajapur Jagannath Temple, there are two plates that are made. One plate is specifically for Dwarkadish Shila, so that he can start with his sweets and then you know, eat his salty items. And one of the places for Jagannath Baldev Shubhadra where their plates are separate. This is such a sweet pastime that Jagannath Baladev Shubhadra, you know, just showing how much, you know, they are, um, they're so loving to their dear devotees. They're so loving to their devotees. And they have such loving reciprocation, loving exchanges amongst devotees. There's another sweet pastime in Rajapur Jagannath, since we're talking about bhoga. In a Jagannath Baladev Shubhadra, actually their favorite is jackfruit. They love jackfruit, especially Balabhadra, because as I said, Balabhadra, he is a sweet tooth. He is a person who has sweet tooth. He loves, loves sweets. So jackfruit, you know, when it gets ripe, it's very sweet, very, very sweet fruit. So, um, right, those of us who have been to Rajapur Jagannath Temple, we know that as soon as we get out from the main um, gate of Rajapur Jagannath, if you go towards the right, there's the guest house area. And right at the entrance of the guest house area, there's a huge jackfruit tree. And that jackfruit tree, till today, gives very, very nice, tasty, delicious, sweet fruits, jackfruits. So, Baladev, 
was actually waiting for, you know, he actually waits. When will the jackfruit ripen and when will I get to eat? And, it, it, you know, in India it happens in the peak of summer that the jackfruit ripens and, you know, we get nice fresh jackfruit. So Baladev, he knew that there are so many jackfruits in that jackfruit tree and Baladev knew that, you know, the jackfruit is getting ripe but this pujari was somehow not getting time to pluck the jackfruit and, you know, it's a tedious process, right? So to take out the jackfruit and offer it to Jagannath Baladev Shubhadra, he was not getting time. So one day in the night, Baladev could not hold his patience anymore. So it is explained that, I mean, it is seen, it, it was seen that um, in the morning, um, one after one night in the morning when the pujari was coming to wake up the deities, he saw that the best ripened jackfruit was fallen from the tree and it was as if someone sat below in the tree, below the tree and opened up the jackfruit and it was, you know, the entire below the tree, you know, the entire space below the tree was strewn with seeds of jackfruit and as if, you know, someone sat and had picnic, you know, like jackfruit picnic over there. And he found Balabhadra's chadar, his angavastra was right there. So this Pujari, you know, he was very, you know, he, he couldn't imagine what was going on. So he actually thought that maybe a thief has come and he has even, you know, done some stealing inside the altar. And, you know, in his haste, he must have forgotten Baladev's chadar. And he has, you know, eaten this jackfruit. He has done so much damage. So in a state of panic, the pujari ran inside the altar. And when he was running inside the altar, when he was coming towards the altar, he saw that there were jackfruit you know, like the flesh of the jackfruit, the um, you know, the seeds of the jackfruit were, you know, all along the way from that tree towards the altar. And he came and he saw the, when he opened the curtains and he went inside the altar, the pujari was stunned because in Baladev's face, there was jackfruit, you know, the fruit, the pulp of the fruit was there on Baladev's face. This is, a true pastime, and there are devotees who have witnessed this, this miraculous pastime in Rajapur, Jagannath, in Mayapur. So this is the glory of Lord Jagannath, Baladev, and Shubhadra, that how so much mercy, Kripa Paravaraha, that their mercy has no limit, no end. They are just like they are ocean of mercy that till today they are just extending themselves to reciprocate, to have loving reciprocation with, the, with their loving devotees. So this is the glory of Lord Jagannath Baladev and Subhadra. So we'll end here. If there's any questions, comments, or reflections, we can take that now. Thank you very much. Shula Prabhupada ki jai. Shri Shri Jagannath Paladev Shubhadra Devi ki jai. Hare Krishna. All glories to Shri Prabhupada and to you. Uh, Mataji, wonderful, wonderful class. It was very funny, very hilarious to hear that there is a Bengali Jagannath and, <laughs> <laughs> and a Gujarati Dwaragadi. That was super funny. <laughs> But uh, so so, how does uh, I thought uh, Krishna is universal and uh, he doesn't have any states and no boundaries, right? So how does he adjust his taste accordingly? <laughs> Very nice question. <laughs> well, um, you know, Lord Chaitanya <coughs> and. Um, you know, they are actually very specific to call themselves Gaudiya, you know. Lord Chaitanya was very, uh, that's why we are Sampradaya is also called Gaudiya because, you know, Gaudadesh means the land of, you know, Lord Chaitanya, which is Bengal. So that's why the devotees of Lord Chaitanya are very lovingly called as Gaudiya Vaishnavas because we belong to Lord Chaitanya. So um, just like, you know, even Krishna, he is, you know, he, he, 
like identifies himself as a Brajabasi, you know. So like that, uh, although these personalities, they are universal. You know, Lord Jagannath itself, the name itself means he's the Lord of the universe. But just to exchange some sweet, you know, transcendental mellows with their devotees and to increase the love of the devotees, you know, they do such pastimes. It is very uh, sweet. It's very nectarian. It's just so that, you know, like Lord Jagannath especially, he is the Lord of for Kali Yuga, you know. And Lord Jagannath, he actually lives like a family member almost. You know, even in, in Puri, if we see that when Lord Jagannath, when they have it, after every 12 years, when they do the Nava Kalevara of Lord Jagannath, which is when they get new deities and they actually put the old deities, the current deities, they go inside in, into a samadhi actually. And they bury the deities. And, you know, just like when, if we have a death in the family, how, you know, the family members, we do this Ashocha Palan. You know, we have these 11 days where we are considered to be impure. We don't do anything. So the head panda, whoever does the, you know, the, the they actually call it the cremation ceremony of Lord Jagannath. They you know, follow this 11 days of ritual and they, you know, then they shave up on the last day, they feed the brahmanas, they do all of that. They do everything just like, you know, a normal person would do, you know. So Lord Jagannath's activities, all of his activities are very, very unique. They are very, very special. And he actually relates all of his activities with all of us. You know, just so that we are so, you know, this shows how fallen nature we have, what fallen condition we are in, that the Lord has to, you know, to make that connection with us, the Lord has to go through all of this. And he takes that trouble of doing all of this, Leela, so that we can connect to him. That is why he's called Patita Pavana. Patita Pavana means the, the deliverer of the most fallen. And that is ours. That is all of us. And because of us, Lord Jagannath, you know, does all these, you know, manifests all of these pastimes so that, you know, all of us can feel that, yes, Lord Jagannath is mine. If he is doing such pastime, he is definitely mine. You know, he is not someone up over there and, you know, who is doing just, you know, big, big leelas with big, big people. Not like that. Lord Jagannath can reciprocate even with a child. Lord Jagannath can reciprocate with anybody. Anybody Lord Jagannath can reciprocate with. So that is what he's showing by manifesting such, you know, nectarian, intimate pastimes like this. So, does that answer your question? Yes, Mother. Yes, uh, it's, it's, it is. Uh, he doesn't have any differences and yes. It's just because of us and our very narrow-minded approach that he would have to change the way he is behaving. And he's doing it so wonderfully. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna.